Hi there, in this video we're going to be taking a look at how you can set up a separate network and today we'll be looking at FidoNet as the network to configure for Mystic and also some tips and tricks about how you can configure a number of those FidoNet message bases very quickly. So to start off with, let me show you some of the things I've done in preparation for this video and we'll be having a look in the Mystic configuration. Now this video assumes that you've already gone through some of the earlier setup stuff that shows you how to configure a network and I, as such I'm not going to get into too much detail on this one. If you want to know more about some of the things I, I will show you then please review some of the earlier videos. What I want to point out to you on this is that I've configured a new echo mail address for FidoNet and in this case I've set up uh, Zone 3 net 770 node 9999 and that node 9999 is often um, a giveaway that it's sort of like a, a dummy address a, a new user that's or a new system that's yet to get a proper node address so that's just been configured as an echo mail address in Mystic because we need our FidoNet address now I'm using this particular address because I run um, the hub that this address would connect to so uh, that hub has been set up as an echo mail node and I've called it agency hub and it's uh, zone 3 net 700 node number 1 and in here it's similar to the FSX net setup you'll see that I've got it set to be active it's uh, compressing the packet files using the zip program it's crashing them to the hub in other words it'll send them straight away uh, I've set a password which is just simply let me in in capital letters. It's using no packet password. The session type is Bink P. The routing info you'll notice has changed. This time it's saying if there is net mail that needs to be sent to either uh, anything in zone 1, 2, 3 or 4 which are the active FidoNet zones in 2016 when I record this video uh, then it's going to route the net mail through this particular hub. Um, I haven't set up a file box but I have set let me in as the tick password and in the session options you'll see I'm polling the agency.bbs.geek.nz but I haven't put any port numbers at the end because it's going to use the default port uh, number for Bink P which is port 24554 so anyway you just need to put that one in there and my password I've also put let me in but just note that this one I've actually made lowercase and this is a little tip, just be aware sometimes if you're trying to poll some system just check that the password case is correct. Sometimes people will require a mixed case, others will be lowercase, others will be uppercase. I personally recommend you stick to uppercase, it just saves a lot of confusion. But otherwise the settings here are pretty much as we set up for the FSX net. What else have I done? Well over in the editor section for the message groups I've created a new message group, group 3 for FidoNet and I've also in the message bases gone ahead and just set up one new message base which is the netmail base for FidoNet so I decided I'd have a separate netmail area for this network and in here you'll see that I've created an echo tag which I just chose randomly called FNN uh, FN mail, FIDO net mail. The file name's the same. The uh, security is set really high, so it's the highest level, but I've assigned it to group 3. So, in other words, unless you're a system operator or an admin, you won't get into this. It's, uh, whoops, that was a mistake. That should be net mail. And I've assigned the net address uh, that we have from the system, so 3770 bar 9. It's not exporting to any echo nodes. You don't need to set the export up for a netmail base because Mystic knows what to do. Because it's FidoNet I've set real names to yes because FidoNet likes real names and I've just gone with the rest of the settings as standard. They're just the stock install. So that, someone sounds happy. I can hear someone laughing in the background. Um, right, so where to from here? Let me just collect my thoughts. Oh, the other thing I did is I set up in the file base group editor um, a new group for the files and I've just called it group 2 for FidoNet but there are no new file bases set up at all and so that's kind of the initial settings at this end of the system that I've just done to configure things for FidoNet but as you can appreciate there are absolutely no message bases set up 
and uh, you know I could add them in manually like I used to do uh, or I could use an automated process and I'll show you how that automated process works but just before I do I do want to show you just a couple more things that I've done in the uh, pre-configuration so you recall we set up a, an any file called mailin.ini which allows us to import messages and there were two areas one that dealt with the messages and the other that dealt with um, the files so in the import echo mail what I've done is I've added an additional um, alias forward here saying that my default user who's called um, the alias is red72 if something comes into red72 forward that to Joe user um, and that just means that it has some sort of relationship it understands that um, red72 is actually in this case the real name of the person is Joe user that's quite important for netmail um, and you'll find that if somebody sends you netmail and it's addressed to your real name you want something that if um, there's this relationship here it, it doesn't hurt to sort of know that red72 equals Joe user um, a couple of other things that I've done you'll recall that we set up when message bases were being automatically created and they were addressed to uh, the FSX default address this is the address that you'd run with before you got your own node address um, then it would create th the message bases, the echo bases uh, using these settings so I've gone ahead and I've just set up the same thing in this time round for um, any echo, echo areas, message bases that are sent to our default address and you'll see that they're being created with high level of security and assigned group 3. Now remember when you do ultimately get your own node address you'll want to change these. You'll want to make that one your current, your proper FSX net address and you'll want to make whatever this is your proper FIDO net address. Down in the file side of things it's the same story just at the very bottom for the automatically create stuff. Uh, in this case I've set up this whole chunk down here and this is just saying if you get something from the agency hub, so it's the hub systems address 3770-1, then go ahead and apply these rules here. So you can see I'm sending it to a slightly different directory and I'm using Z2 which is the file group 2 for those settings. So that just takes care of future file stuff. So with all that preamble and we've been talking for a few minutes about that, how do we go ahead and say set up a whole lot of message bases that we can then populate with messages. So this is the way that I'll, I'll take you through how this works but just consider for a minute too whether you really want to do this because what you can do is just use Mystic to go ahead and create the message bases as the file areas or the message areas are sent to you from your FidoNet system that you're connected to, your hub system. But if you just want to go ahead and create a whole bunch of empty message bases that may fill up when messages occur, this is the way to go. So on the desktop I've created a folder here called importing a .na file. Now in mutil I've set, I've just created a, um, a new any file and a file here which is called backbone. So let me explain what this file is. Um, you'll see that it's got this extension .na and what it is, it's probably easier if I just open it up and show you, is a, a text file that's got two columns in it. The first column is the echo area tag that relates to that particular echo area and then the second column is just a description of what it's about and on it goes. Down through the list you can see there's the echo area tag and then there's the description. Now this NA file is um, a file that's called backbone.na and what I did is I just had a look on good old Google and I found this site here which is uh, www.filegate.net forward slash backbone forward slash. Now filegate.net is just one of many sites that you can ultimately find these kind of files but this backbone.na is a list of active FidoNet echoes available on what's called the North American Backbone. This is an extensive list of all the echo areas that you can get in FidoNet. This is just, for want of a better word, a starting point for you if you wanted to just go ahead and set up what's known as the, um, the backbone in the US uh, Zone 1 scene. 
I'm not saying that it's by all means the uh, be all and end all. There are plenty of other echo areas you can get and uh, depending on what zone you're interested in, you'll, you'll probably find equivalent uh, NA files that will help you. Um, but this particular uh, website will give you some information about these um, files and you can see here there's a, an FAQ that actually talks about what this is and um, what it means and so on. So just check that out at your own leisure. I'll include a link in the uh, description to this video. But that said, we have what is effectively a file that we're going to be able to suck into Mystic to help us set up some message bases. So that gives us the echo area tag and it gives us a description, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't let us set some of those other rules that we're used to setting, like uh, security and so on. So what we've done, or what I've done, is I've created an any file, which I'm going to drop into the Mystic directory shortly, called importna.ini. And if I just look at that, one of the uh, functions in Mutil is to import what's known as a phytonet.na style file into message bases. Uh, the term phytonet is just really a reference to this type of file, but as you can see it can be uh, any particular name, as I'll show you. So down here we've got the function turned on, import phytonet.na is true. Then I've got the normal kind of logging mess, uh, setup that I've been using for the rest of the bulletin board uh, videos. And then we get down to the import underscore phytonet.na stanza. So the first thing you can do is you specify the name of the file that you want to import. So in this case I'm going to import a file called backbone.na. I want to um, convert uh, tags to lowercase for the actual message base file name, so that's the data files that Mystic will be saving. It'll just save the equivalent um, data file with the name of the echo area tag. Um, so if you look in your hard drive and your messages directory you'll just see they're all lowercase. Then here's where we can set some default values when creating any new message bases. And you'll see I've set my net address with the one that I configured earlier. You'll see that I've set the security high and the groups to group 3. And I've pretty much gone here on this screen with all the sort of default settings. The only thing I really did change, apart from this bit here, was that I made real names equal 1, because I know Fidonet likes to have real names. And down the bottom here, base format equals 0. In fact, uh, this is a little bit out of date, this, this any file, because Squish is no longer supported. So really that shouldn't be there at all. It's only jam. So with that said, what I'm going to do is I will take the backbone file and the any file and I'm just going to drop them into my mystic root directory. And there they are there. There's the backbone. I'll just sort them by date and time. Oh, one's newer than the other, but they're both in there. Backbone and import NA. Now what I'm going to do is fire up a command prompt which I'm just doing off screen and I'll drag it into view now and we're going to run our good old fashioned friend Mystic Utility and I'm just trying to remember what I called the any file now import NA import NA fingers crossed team wow look at that in the blink of an eye in about 1.83 seconds we just created 182 message bases you want to go have a look? Let's uh, hide that for a second and fire up our config side of things again. And if we go into editors, message base editor, well you look at that. All of those message bases have been created. And if I wanted to press enter on one of them, this is what it's done. It's sucked in the name from that description column. It's also just used the same description for the news group um, field and then it's used the echo tag for both the QWK name and the uh, echo tag proper. Then you can see the file name is just a lowercase version of the tag and then it's applied all of those um, settings. So it's gone ahead and applied the, the list, the read, the post and you can see over here real names is yes. Uh, but there are one or two other things that we do need to change like the, um, the origin line we might want to, uh, well we will need to set the export to, so we need to export this particular base 
um, to, if I insert, we want to export the messages that are posted here to the agency hub 3770 bar 1. Because if we don't link this base to that area, then any messages we post here are never going to leave our bulletin board and go to the FidoNet hub. As you can appreciate, there's a lot of message bases here, and a lot of them are publicly viewable ones. One or two of them might be only designed to be read by system operators. So it's good to set the security high to start with, and then you can go through each of them and set the security lower for ones that you know Joe User can look at, or I should mean Joe Public, uh, but if Joe User, who's our system operator for this in this case, um, then you know, it might need to be left at the higher levels of security. Now I'll stop the video here, but do tune in for the next episode because the next episode is a tip and trick one which will allow you to do some mass changes to all of these bases and save you so much time and effort. You won't believe it. As always, thank you for watching and if you like the video, please, um, you know, well, subscribe to the channel. And I really do appreciate the positive feedback and uh, the information you guys have been giving me about the videos. Thanks for watching. Until then, bye for now.